people tell you what you're going to see and the training prepares you to go but they don't, training only gives you about 90 percent of what will actually happen and i'm so glad that nasa doesn't try to fill in that last 10 percent when you get there um, and the first sensation you have uh, when you become weightless is that your your arms just float like this and when you take off your all of your belts that hold you on the seat then you begin to float up out of your seat and you see your other crewmates doing the same thing you're just totally overwhelmed by it you know it's one thing for you to sense but then to look and see someone else doing the same thing then you go to the window and look out and you look down initially uh, and you see this world that we live in and it is round I, f I found that out when I got up there it is round and uh, I still believe it's flat, but it's round. <laughs> and it's just the most beautiful view that you can have. Uh, when you look down, those things that had been difficult in your studying make sense. When you see this holistic view of it below, you can see the intermixing of the uh, fluids, air and water, you can see that and how it reacts with the dirt continents you know things like that and when you look down things make sense and i wish that you could take a fourth grader and take them this took them to space because when they look down then they begin to understand these concepts that a teacher is trying to impart on them uh, so that's one of the things so i think that Outside, seeing your your crewmates float and then that you can do things that, that you thought were a requirement of gravity like eating and sleeping and brushing your teeth and going to the bathroom you can do all of those things in space which means that the body has adapted to this new environment and so if you believe that the body was only built to live on earth with gravity you, you, you are suddenly awakened to the fact that no, the body is not restricted uh, to um, Earth, that it can go into a new environment and that it changes. It takes eight months to get there. Um, based on the, um, the orbit of Mars and Earth, you have to do it when Mars and Earth are close to each other. They're, in, they're both in kind of an elliptical orbit, uh, but the uh, Mars one is a bit more eccentric. And so every now and then, the two are close together uh, like this. Generally, it's like this. And so the only time we use low energy transfer is to go to Mars, even when we're close, it would take eight months. Mm -hmm. But you still have to come home when they're close. So you can only stay about two weeks, three weeks on Mars. Then you have to make the eight month trip back. So uh, it gets a bit complex. So we are typically keeping people on orbit for six months, this international crew that's up there now. And so we know that the humans can go and stay easily for six months and then come home and then they quickly readapt to Earth, Earth environment, because we've got to readapt i mean we've we've gone up there we've become we've, we've, we've become spacelings essentially we've got to come back and become earthlings again mm -hmm. um, eating you think is a requirement uh, you need gravity to do that you don't at all uh, the doctors originally believed that you had to have gravity to swallow mm -hmm. you don't at all i mean if you hung upside down on a chinning bar and you had a Snickers, you could eat it, and it would go up the, or down, up, you <laughs> say, <laughs> into your stomach. The same thing in space. Originally, the doctors thought that a human could not survive going to space, that the body could not adapt to it. So Americans sent chimpanzees, Russians sent dogs, and when those animals came back and survived, they said, well, let's send humans. Initially, we were thinking, the Americans were thinking, well, let's send prisoners to space. And uh, it was decided that would be cruel and unusual punishment. So they sent military test pilots like me to space. <laughs> so, 